Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for another round of Just in Slime! The incredibly popular soon-to-be daytime TV show where you, the audience, answer Bible trivia questions to avoid getting slalalalimed. Don't worry, though. This is a television show, so we haven't yet figured out how to get the slime through the TV to you. But we're working on it. The rules are simple. I'll read a statement, then you'll have five seconds to decide if that statement is true or false. If you think it's true, then stand up. If you think it's false, then sit down. True, stand. False, sit. Easy enough, right? If you choose the wrong answer, you get slimed! Think you can make it through all six questions without getting slimed? Well, we're about to find out, because it's time to play Just in Slime! Here is the first statement. Jacob was Esau's father. True or false? Remember, stand if you think it's true, but sit if you think it's false. Okay, time's up. Who's standing? You just got slimed. Jacob was Esau's brother, not his dad. Now it's time for round two. Esau traded his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of soup. True or false? Don't forget, stand for true, sit for false. Okay, time's up. Who's standing? You are correct. I see you are starting to get the hang of this. Let's see how you do in round three. Jacob promised to work for seven years for the chance to marry his wife, Rachel. True or false? It's time to decide. Okay, time's up. Is anybody sitting down? Cause you just got slimed. Jacob did promise to work for seven years to marry his bride. Oh, how romantic. Okay, moving on to round four. Esau was never able to forgive Jacob for taking his birthright, and they fought their whole lives. True or false? Okay, time's up. Who is sitting down? You are correct. Although they had their disagreements, Jacob and Esau did not end up fighting their entire lives. Ooh, only two rounds to go. Jacob's name was eventually changed to Israel. True or false? Time is up. Who is sitting down? You just got slalalalimed. Jacob actually did become known by the name Israel. Ooh, here comes the final round. Jacob became the father of Abraham. True or false? Time is up! Is anyone standing? If so, you just got slimed! Abraham was actually Jacob's grandfather. Oh, well done, everyone. If you avoided the slime through all six rounds, that is very impressive. Thanks for playing Just in Slime! Feel the wonder, say his name. Watch the darkness slip away. Put your power on display Say goodbye to fear and shame
or darkness, you're with me, you're with me. Whenever I'm failing or falling, you've got me, you've got me. boys and girls. This is Sister Cynthia here to share with you another wonderful lesson. This morning we're going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant. But before we do that, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you now asking you, Lord, to think through my mind and speak through my lips. May this word that goes forth, Father God, be all of you and none of me. May the ears that hear me Lord God, not just be listeners, but also doers, Lord God. May the hearers of your word be quick to obey. May the hearts that receive this word be fertile, Lord God, be fertile soil and grow up to be courageous enforcers of your word. In Jesus' name, I thank you that everything that is said is for the glorification of your word and your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, as I mentioned, Today, this morning, we're going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant. Does anyone know what the Ark of the Covenant is? Well, yes. Let me tell you, that is one of, uh, the Ark of the Covenant is one of God's greatest mysteries. And it actually is a big box. It's a big wooden box and it was made to allow God to reside among his people. In the scriptures, this is discussed in Exodus 25, verses 8 through 26. And it talks about exactly what God wanted. God explained to Moses exactly how the ark was to be made and who was to make it. This ark, it was a movable sanctuary for the Israelites. 
and it was a holy place that was not to be touched or looked at directly. It was kept in the most holy of holy places. It was in the center of the tabernacle. Now you guys may have heard about the tabernacle in uh, the previous lesson. So I'm not going to go over that with you today, but I just wanted to mention that the Ark of the Covenant, it was a place for God to dwell among his people. Uh, he made promises to his people and this Ark was a representation uh, along with the items that were in it to help them to know that God was with them at all times. And as I mentioned, the Ark of the Covenant was not to be touched. This was a holy item. It was precious to God. And to look at or touch the Ark could be deadly. So you want to make sure you keep God in his holy regard. So this Ark, it was holy and it was not to be looked upon and it was not to be touched. And there is even mention in the Bible of people that died from looking upon it. So um, that just shares with you how precious and how holy this ark was. And it was the place where the priests went to make atonement for the people. And this is mentioned in Leviticus chapter 16 verses 14 through 16. And you ask me, what does atonement mean? Well, atonement, it is to uh, make a forgiveness, to get forgiveness or to make reparation uh, for sin, to ask for forgiveness of sin. And this is what the priests did. They went into the holy place and they sprinkled blood. Uh, of the, the blood of bulls and goats uh, to gain forgiveness for the people for their sins and this was through the shedding of, of blood as I mentioned at this time during the Ark of the Covenant time they used the blood of bulls and goats but boys and girls how many of you can tell me what do we use today? Right today we use the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus, as I shared with you in lessons before, this precious blood of Jesus is the atonement for our sins today. And we can know because we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior that our sins have been forgiven. Amen? Now, how does this happen now, as I mentioned? It happens now through the blood of Jesus. And during that time, the Ark of the Covenant, it contains specific items important to God in reference to promises between him and his people, the Israelites. So as the people of Israel, you know, as the Israelites, you know that they went through the wilderness. And as they went through the wilderness, they committed sins. They did many things. And... As they traveled with Moses, God gave Moses the word on what to do and how to do it. Now, when God was explaining to Moses how to make this ark or how he wanted this ark to be made, there were specific things that he told him. And he told him exactly how it was to be made. And it was made out of Okasha wood, representing man, and it was to be coated with gold, 100% gold. And 100% gold represented God in his perfection. Okay? Because we know that we're not perfect, but only God is perfect. Uh, and we know that Jesus died for our sins because he was fully man and fully God. So we have this representation. Now we have Jesus. And th at that time, they had the Ark of the Covenant which was made out of wood, covered in gold, 100% gold, which was representation of a perfect God, our perfect God. Now, the wood was overlaying, as I mentioned, with 100% gold, representing God, his holiness, his majesty. And that just was so, so important 
because God wanted them to know that he was with them. Although, as I mentioned, they continued to do wrong when Moses went up the mount to the mount to, um, to commune with God. The people, they sinned, they made false gods, uh, they were doing some of everything. And at this time, when Moses came back down with the Ten Commandments, the people were in disarray. And so you know what happened? Moses broke the Ten Commandments. And that was a representation of broken people. But you know, at that time, God did not give up on them. Moses had to go back and he had to take tablets again to God. And at this point, God wrote on the tablets the Ten Commandments. And he wrote the Ten Commandments for his people because he wanted these people to know that he loved them and they had been forgiven of their sins. At this point, he wrote, because we have a loving and forgiving God, boys and girls. Our God, he gives us many chances. We do not have to be perfect in our attempts in doing the right thing. Our God does try to forgive us and he does it over and over again. So you can know that if you make a mistake, you can ask God to forgive you and he is willing to forgive. And that is proven in the fact that when Moses broke the 10 commandments uh, because of the people's sin, God had him come again and God wrote the Ten Commandments so that the people can know what was expected of them and they could still be in commune with God. Isn't that a wonderful God that we serve? He forgives us, not just one time, not just two times, not even three times, but God is willing to forgive us over and over again when we recognize that we have sinned and we come to him and ask for forgiveness. I just love that, I just love that. Now, as I mentioned, when Moses brought back these 10 commandments, he also was informed by God how he was to make this ark. And God explained exactly how he wanted it to, made, to be made. Now, this ark, he gave him specific dimensions. It was supposed to be three, 0.9 feet long and 2.3 feet wide and tall. Along the top edge, it had king's crown fashioned in solid gold around the edges, as you can see in, the in my picture here, that around the top of the arc edges, there was a crown fashioned in solid gold. Okay, so what was in the arc? I'm sure you can tell me. Yes, in the ark, there was manna, the bread the Israelites ate while they journeyed through the wilderness. And there was the staff of Aaron, which I mentioned to you that budded. And there was the 10 commandments. These were the items that were important to God and to commune with his people so that they would not forget how God was with them through this entire time. Now, boys and girls, as they had the Ark of the Covenant, we have Jesus. We have Jesus and we have the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross for us, for our sins. And if you, boys and girls, would like to know that you have God in your life, that you're saved and you know that you will commune together with him in eternity, you can have that life now. All you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart, denounce Satan, and you can be saved. So I would like for you to just say it with me. Lord God, I accept that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for my sins, and he rose again on the cross. And I would like to live my life in Jesus Christ from this day forward, in Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer with me, you're now a child of God, and I need you to know that Hebrews 
chapter 9, verse 12 says, With his own blood he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And that tells us that we are saved because Jesus died for us. And we don't have to do it again, and neither does he. And we are saved, and remember that Jesus is Lord. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Super.